welcome to the Painting with Coffee series. Um, you're going to need your three coffee paints. If you don't know how to make that, just check out the other videos. Um, it's simply just very strongly brewed coffee with not much water, uh, quite a bit of water, and a lot of water to make a dark, a medium light. I think you can still see the coffee grounds in this one accidentally. Try not to get those in your coffee paint, but we've got that. And you'll need two pencils. You'll need one to draw with and another one to pull your coffee on your page, acting kind of as a paintbrush. And then an eraser uh, is always a good idea. Now today's design is not an original at all. I got this cool card years ago um, from the airport in San Francisco and I just love it. And it's um, signed J Pale Sky 06. So, um, anyways, this is his design, but I thought it'd be cool in coffee. And I love the surprise element. When you open it, the bird, part of the bird is now a sandcastle. And I just thought that'd be a lot of fun. So we're gonna do that today. The first thing you have to do is fold your paper so that you have an edge sticking out. And the next thing, once you've got that nice and folded, is we're gonna need to draw our bird. So, and we need the bird to be half on one side, half on the other. So we're just gonna put in a kind of a basic bird shape. And you wanna keep in mind that this part over here again is going to lead into your sandcastle. And we'll give the birdie some feet. And so again, it's simple, it's a clever, clever card, which is why I love it. But it's a, a rather simple design. Um, at least for our purposes for coffee, we're gonna make it simple. All right, what you're going to do is take your pencil and you need to create a blunt edge where it's not sharp. And I'm just gonna do that by kind of going back and forth until it starts to dull, form an angle and dull. And that's been really a nice way to pull the paint. Oh, before I do that, I'm gonna take my light, light color and I'm just gonna finger paint in a little background around the bird and in other videos you've probably heard me say we just want it wet enough so it doesn't drag but we don't want to compromise the paper and cause the paper to rip so you kind of got to find a balance of putting on not too much at a time all right there we go so we've got a little bit of background for him and now I'm gonna take my darkest color. I've got my dark, medium, and light. And I'm just gonna lightly touch. I'm not wanting to draw or add any graphite to the paper anymore. I'm just wanting to cover up those lines. And I really drew those lines too dark because I wanted to be sure they showed up on camera. You can probably draw much, much lighter and then you won't have to look at graphite. I don't like to see graphite with watercolor. So I'm just kind of following the lines, allowing this to pull the coffee onto the page and over the line. All right, so I'm just gonna finish off the little bit of head that crosses over the line there. And when I put in the legs, what I'm going to do is I'm going to squiggle back and forth, shoulder to shoulder, to give that spindly look. And I'm, I'm squiggling back and forth. I don't have a lot of coffee on my pencil because I want it to, I don't want to risk a big blotch. And I'm probably going to go back in once that's dry and reinforce that with another layer. But if I try to deepen and darken it all at the same time, probably the paper is going to tear. 
I don't want to get the paper too wet. And what I want to do now is I'm going to put in the beak. I'm going to kind of work the top down with these darker colors. And you've got to find some patience with your pencil, especially if it's not laying the coffee paint down like you hope. And I'll probably come back and deepen that as well. And I know I want this tail feather to be dark, so I'm going to go there. And that's really just so I can go. It, it gives it time to dry while I work on other areas uh, so that when I'm ready to come back and add another layer, I can make it darker. Let's work on that front wing. I'm going to alternate between these as I go down because I'd like to insinuate a layered feathered look. Okay, that's rather pretty. And a little shadow right here under this brighter section of the wing. And again, if the paper's not going to take it or the pencil's not placing it quite as you like, just be patient and you can always go back later. I'm also going to add the eye. Now, the eye is a teardrop shape. And it is separated evenly between the two barriers, or the, the two edges of the fold, I'm sorry. Yeah, the two edges of the fold. So I'm going to lightly place that. About like that. And I believe that half of the eye on the right side is going to become one of the windows in the sandcastle. I think that's how it's planned. Well, that's kind of pretty. And I think I want to stop there for a bit and come back after this has had a chance to dry. So I'll be back in about five minutes. For you, it'll only seem like a half a second. All right, so we're back. And this isn't all the way dry, but it's had a chance to kind of seep in a little bit. And I thought what I'd do is kind of work on some of the lines that are going to imply the ocean water down in here. So I'm going to make a little squiggle and then kind of brush it out with my finger. Okay, so I've got to find patience again because it's not carrying it quite as I'd hoped. So I'm just going to wait a minute. And I may come over to my scratch paper and see if I can continue creating that dull edge. So I dip that in the paint and see what happens. Oh, there we go. Now that laid down in quite a puddle, so I'm going to try to spread that out and not let that puddle um, stand or seep in. Again, I don't want the paper to tear. Oh, there we go. Okay, so we've got some kind of interesting lines going on down here. 
And we can put a few interesting lines to imply clouds in the sky. Now I don't want these lines to be too dark. Uh, I really want the darkest things to be the birds, so I may kind of go in, use my finger to spread it out a bit. Give it a little bit more of a misty. like a pet in my bird. I'm not going to sweat that too much. All right. So I've kind of got some, some textures now. And so things I think are ready for a second coat. The legs, the back feather, and the beak have the darkest values. So I'm going to see if I can get this to take another layer. And the legs are a squiggle. Back and forth motion. You want to be careful there's just not a lot on your pencil. Your pencil brush as you move. Now if things aren't working out, be patient. Don't be afraid to start over. Oh, I just said to be patient, and I just got a big blotch there. Um, I guess I wasn't feeling very, feeling very patient. So I'm going to take the tiniest corner of a paper towel and see if I can get it to absorb up, and it did. If you're quick about it, you can get that, sometimes get it corrected through absorption. I'm going to leave that alone for now because it's wet. I want to go in when it's dry and see if I can redefine the lines. So now we've got to deal with this part of the bird and kind of the magic of his is that the way this is blends rather nicely into the, the textures and the coloring of the sandcastle. So I want to keep this very light on this side so that the blending can happen fairly easily. So what I think I'm gonna try for that is using my finger and I'm going to place a little bit of the coffee right there so I have a puddle because again I, I want this to really be light I, I want to work really slowly so I'm dragging from my puddle across and you can see the puddle went away fairly quickly but I don't want to go directly from the jar into my bird I think that that could cause an unnecessary amount of problems Okay, and then on, throughout it, it's got a splotchy look. So I'm going to try to make that splotchy look by kind of um, dotting in with my finger. I hope you can catch that, kind of that texturing that's creating. Now, we can't create what he created. Um, he's using watercolor, and it's just, uh, he did a beautiful job. I love it and admire it. But this is more of just, you know, how can we take that idea... Uh, have a little fun with it with coffee. I'm not going to try to imitate every gesture he's made. Um, but hopefully I can sell him a few cards. Get people interested in his work. Because it's just beautiful. I'm now going to go back again and splotch. With my finger. And I did get some more of that different texture there. 
And I think that's where I'm going to stop and let things dry. Oh, I see up here I spilled or wasn't careful up there. I think I let the pencil roll into it. So rather than stress or get upset about that, I'm just going to add a little texture up there. And later I may probably try to put a bird or something to make it look like it's part of the original plan. That being said, just don't sweat your mistakes as much as you can. Just kind of... Um, work them into your art and see what you can create. Uh, see if you can make that mistake one of the best parts of your piece. Okay, so I'm going to come back after this is completely dry. I'm going to turn it and we're going to build our sandcastle. Uh, you can see some of it bled through because again, I'm just using plain old paper out of my printer. I don't want anyone, I don't want to encourage anyone to go out and buy anything in the stores um, during this quarantine. So uh, that's just kind of, we're going to add those things and those gestures into our sandcastle and it should be just fine. All right, see y'all in a bit. All right, so we've let the bird dry. And now what we're going to do is we're going to go back in and we're going to develop the sandcastle. So what we've created here is, oh, that's hard to see. I'm going to have to go back in and darken those lines so you can see it. We've got the bird line here, and we need to kind of incorporate that into the, the sun castle. And I've already kind of plotted a bit of that. If you think of the sand castle as things like rectangles and triangles, then any architecture really becomes something you can put your mind around if you start to see the rectangles and the the triangles first. So we're just I'm just gonna put a bunch of rectangles. I'm drawing way too dark. When you get in there and start to draw, keep it really light. Again, graphite's pretty ugly. Anyway, if you were a kid and remember playing with blocks, that's what you're kind of doing with your art on the sandcastle. You're just kind of stacking some blocks here and there to kind of build up a sandcastle around... Um, around this bird line so it kind of looks pretty seamless and then there's a ball which is just a circle and oh something like that okay so we're going to go into this scene now and use our coffee paint again you want to be patient and what i'm going to start with is i'm going to do that trick where i put a pool of water on the scratch paper a pool of the lightest one and then I'm going to draw that, well, let's see, running out of space. I'm going to kind of pull that sideways from where my dried work here is with the bird into that sandcastle to kind of start getting it a base. Not quite an underpainting, but something of some uniformity here. And as I draw up, into the castle then I'm gonna bring it down and in now the trick is with his beautiful watercolor work you know he's got the blue river and the purple sky and the red ball and his sand color is that's all we've got to work with the sand color so we've got to kind of be careful about laying darks and lights we don't want it to look like just one giant beach we do want there to seem like there's some ocean and sky and and then the foreground of the ball so we're going to be as careful as we can be. I'm going to go in now and start adding the dark from top to bottom. I'm just going to trace over my lines to begin with. If you've done this right and you've been very light-handed, you won't even see those graphite lines. Mine you're going to see mainly because I just I wanted you to be able to see on camera for sure. I get so disappointed when I make a video and I go back in and you can't hardly see anything so I'm trying to be really mindful of that I'm brand new to making these videos this this began with COVID so I appreciate everybody's patience with my the different things that go not quite right but it's still fun to try something new whether it's art or coffee painting or fooling around with a 
computer to make art videos. I'm just going in again. I'm just laying in same lines. Here and there. Not too worried again about um, perfection. I, I honestly just wanted a chance to play. Take you with me as we We'll see what we can do with coffee here. So we've got kind of those dark lines. Now, the ball. For the ball, I think I'm going to try to go around it and leave the white paper white on some of the stripes on the ball. I think that might be pretty. And I'm going to then, where he used a beautiful red paint, dark kind of a darkish red paint I'm gonna use dark coffee to let the some of the alternating lines stand out on the ball and I made a mistake there somehow I'm just gonna leave it I'm not gonna sweat that too much Now, as I look into my sandcastle here, I'm going to add a little bit of a second layer to these windows. As we add layers and colors, it just makes it a little more interesting to look at. You wouldn't want your sandcastle to be all one color of um, coffee. So that's why we add our layers and try different things. I'm over here where the bird is now. And I'm going to kind of make some flecks. Some light ideas there. But hopefully we'll make him look like he's got some feathers. And not destroy the vision of the sandcastle too much. I think that's all right. And then for the sky, I'm just going to up here where I left it pretty white, add in a few thoughts. Oh, I've got some shadows there. Okay. Hopefully that's okay to see. I'm going to add some thoughts to resemble clouds there. And then I'm going to use a wavy line here to hopefully create some sort of transition to see. And I think in class we've talked a lot if you're one of my students about line studies so this one kind of line and then this is a very different kind of line so even though we don't have colors to work with lines can cause us to create the idea of something new happening in the landscape and van gogh's line studies were just a brilliant he was brilliant at doing that, and so that's always a good thing to look at if you haven't gotten to enjoy the Van Gogh line studies. Um, do yourself a favor and Google that. I think I'll add a little bit more here. try to use a little bit of finger painting you know sand castles don't typically have wonderful hard line structures I know there's professionals that can often accomplish quite a bit but mainly the sand kind of flows softly from structure to structure and while the original artist was able to do that mine are looking pretty hard lined uh, Go ahead and play around with kind of some finger painting or sh gentle shading. And it may be in part because my graphite is so strong that that's creating a harder look than I would have liked. But otherwise, I think this card is, we were able to kind of create his idea in coffee. 
and create a surprise for whoever receives your card. So I hope you enjoyed this. If you painted along with me, do send it to me. Uh, my email is missapronstrings at gmail.com or oklahomahomeschoolart uh, at gmail.com. I'd love to see what you created, and uh, I'll see you next time for coffee art.